us. I'll invite you to stand and share with me in our responsive call to worship from Psalm 37. Don't get upset over people who do wicked things. Their influence will soon pass. Trust in the Lord and do good, and we'll live in the land enjoying its benefits. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in the Lord, and he will act on your behalf. Let us be still before the Lord. Let us wait patiently for him. And our opening hymn is Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. It's number 592. steadfast love is never ending. We invite your presence to be among us, and we ask that you would challenge our thinking, challenging our assumptions, and, and challenge our understanding of the world through the word today, through the wisdom of your spirit, and through the example of Jesus, through the wisdom he shares. We pray, O oh God, for your grace, for your love and grace and peace to overtake us, to be all about us and to fill us. So we ask in the name of, of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to invite Paul to come along with the children for the children's story. <clears throat> it's story time. Come on down. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay. Good morning. It's good to have you all here this morning. This morning I have a game to play. <clears throat> this is a game that me and my grandson would play whenever he was younger. That was about 25 years ago, so see if I can remember it. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> you know what these are? Yeah, these are blocks. Okay. Now, our story, the way we played it or whatever, is I would go and I'd stack the blocks and see how high I could make them. Have you ever stacked blocks? Okay. And as I would be stacking the blocks, Keith would go and knock them down. Does that ever happen to you? Yes? No? Okay. So, since I showed you what our game was, you want to help me to stack blocks? Hmm? Not a block. <laughs> Can you stack them there? Yeah. Hey, that's good. Do you want to help? You? Sydney? Olivia, can you help stack? Here's another one. How high can you go? Hey, that's doing pretty good. Yay! Yeah. Yay, yeah, yay! Yay, yeah, yay! Yeah. Yay! Here's another one. <laughs> you might have to stand up. Hey, you're doing good. That's better than what I did. <laughs> yes, I, you agreed with me, didn't you? <laughs> okay. And some more. Yeah. Now, I think you better stand up to get that one. Yeah. Or do you want to start another one here? <laughs> hey, you guys are real good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Got more. Yeah. Here, do you want to stack it here? <laughs> oh. Yay. Yay. Okay, that was good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll go and have a little story with that. Okay, so uh, we come to church to worship God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Now, along with our blocks here or whatever, if we can do them a different way, now, Okay, now I want you to go and stack blocks, but I want you to put them all on the floor and make a circle. Can you do that? Can you make a circle out of them? Yeah, just put them here on the floor like that. Fill the middle one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to do it, don't you? Oop, sorry. Yep. Fill the circle in. Yeah. Okay, now I have a reason why I'm making a circle. Whenever we get them all in there, I'll, let, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm going to plant. Oh, you're going to take them out. Okay. <laughs> so we have a circle and we have a straight line. That's good. Okay. Now, the reason I had you put them in a circle is I want to explain a little bit about our church family. Yeah. Yeah. And there goes one more added circle. <laughs> okay. So our church family is made of a circle. And in the middle is our minister, which is our leader. And... We have a couple here, and we call this our church board members. Okay. Now, the rest of the circle that's around them or whatever is the congregation. And indirectly, the congregation supports the minister and the church board to keep our church moving. And uh, so my story this morning is we are the supporting people on the outside holding the congregation together. And... Uh, uh, we all have different talents. 
you know, some might be like Doris playing the organ or Prudy playing the piano. And I think uh, Amy plays the piano and uh, Christopher. And uh, there's other people that, uh, you know, have talents in the church too. Uh, we have worship leaders. We have people that take care of the worship center. Uh, we have people count some money, people that are ushers. And we all have a part in the church. Uh, some are important, and other ones is uh, people that stand by and uh, support us. And this is my story this morning or whatever, that uh, uh, on a whole, the church minister, the church board, and the church itself, the congregation, this is our way of spreading the word of God to our congregation and visitors, and, uh, and this is our way of serving God. So this is my story for this morning. Thank you. I gotta, gotta say that a good foundation is hard to knock over, too. I gotta I pick that up from this story, too. Thanks, Paul. I want to turn now to our Old Testament reading, which is from the story of the book of Genesis. Um, just a small glimpse into the story of Joseph. Um, and I'll tell a little more of this story later, but this is. Um, kind of at the climax, the climax of, uh, of the story of Joseph. Um, you may remember from the story that many years before this, Joseph's brothers really betrayed him. They'd sold him into slavery, and he was carried off by a caravan to Egypt. And now, many years later, he, he meets his brothers again. So Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save your lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been a famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will also be no plowing or reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. And so it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of this entire household and the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You will live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you and your children and your grandchildren, your flocks and your herds and all that you have, and I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise you and your household and all who belong to you will not will become destitute and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them and after his brothers talked with him oh, i'm sorry that's the last part is not supposed to be there um so i invite you just to think about about the the grace in joseph's greeting of his brothers after many years after many experiences he was able to forgive them and to offer life to offer all that they needed for living
Well, God, we are, we are thankful for the gift of life, to, to be breathing, to be alive, to be able to enjoy the sunrise, the sunset, and the cool, the cool, refreshing air outside yesterday and today, to know that spring isn't too far off to see the seasons, to see the beauty of the world around us, and to see the intricacies of our own lives, our bodies, and our communities, and our world. Remind us, O oh God, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Remind us of your presence with us in that journey, and the challenges of, those, of the journey. Remind us, O oh Lord, that that your perspective is eternal and that you see beyond our last breath here and that indeed there is a new beginning as we come to the end of this life. Help us to see the evidence of that new beginning in your resurrection and in, in the creation that you've made. Help us to believe We pray also and thank you for the words you've given us, the scriptures, the gospels, the story of your life here and your teachings and your miracles. And, and again, we pray that you would help us to believe when your words are challenging and, and when they're hard to get, hard to figure out how they relate and where the truth is in them, help us to believe. Help us to see evidence that your word works and leads to, to blessing and fulfillment and purpose in life. Help us to believe. Oh God, we pray for our world. We pray that your simple truths could be lived out among your people to make the world a better place. Help us in that, in that work, in that journey. Help us to believe. Help us to find peace. Help us to find your love. Help us to find meaning, our purpose in your kingdom. Help us to believe, O oh Lord. we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Gospel reading from, from Luke, chapter 6. This is a continuation of, of what's been referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, in contrast to Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus was up on the mountain and shared some of these same ideas. Here, um, it says, He came down and was among the people. And he began to speak, and, and we pick up in chapter 6, verse 27. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also from from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. To receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful, and to the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, 
and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. May the word of God come alive in our hearts today. I gotta say, it's not an easy text. It's just so straightforward. And I guess the pressure is off because they're not my words. <laughs> they're right there in the Bible. And they're there for you to, to wrestle with, for us to wrestle with. And so I don't, I don't make the case for them. They're Jesus' words. But I hope that maybe together we can wrestle and, and think about how we hear them and how, how we're doing at this, you know? Um, love your enemies. And it's interesting. He's in the middle of a sermon, of course. And if you remember how the first sermon went, um, back whenever he was in his hometown, they were ready to throw him off a cliff before he got done. And... I'm glad that you guys are a little more, um, I'm not worried about you revolting this morning as I begin to speak, which is good. And there's no cliffs around. Well, you know, actually, maybe. But. So Jesus begins to tell the truth. And sometimes the truth isn't good to hear. It's not fun to hear. That's what happened in his hometown, where the people said, you know, wait a minute, aren't you Joseph's son? Aren't you, didn't you grow up here among us? And, and, and then he said, you know, remember, remember how Elijah didn't go to any of the widows of Israel, but he went to the Canaanite widow in Zarephath. And that raised their ire, and they, uh, they got pretty upset. Here, he's just gotten done telling us about the reversal. You know, blessed are the poor, and woe to you who are rich. And so now, as it gets a little further down into the message, he says, okay, one way of interpreting this is, okay, if you're still listening, if you're still listening, then I've got some real words for you, right? Love your enemies. Love your enemies and do good to those who abuse you. And the other part of the readings today are the marvelous example we have in this from back in Genesis. If you read from Genesis 40 on, the, the book of Genesis is a fun read because it's narrative. It's the story of Abraham from, from chapter 12 on, the story of Abraham and his children. And so we meet Jacob. You remember the story. Jacob once goes off to his dad, Isaac's cousin, Laban, and he works for seven years to marry the daughter that he loves, Rachel. And at the last minute, Laban, her father, plays a trick on him and sticks Leah in under the veil. And Jacob is beside himself. He doesn't really like Leah that much. And he has to work for seven more years to win the hand of Rachel. And finally he does. And, and then he begins to start the family. Leah's the one who has boys, lots of boys. And Rachel has none until finally Joseph is born. And Jacob prophesies over Jacob that he, or Joseph, that, that he's going to be a great leader among his brothers. And his brothers get jealous and they start to pick on him. And his dad gives him this beautiful coat. You remember the story? And before you know it, Leah's boys are out to get him. They throw him in a pit and they sell him off to slavery and they send him to Egypt. And Reuben feels really guilty about this. Reuben has a hard time with this. And Joseph, God's hand is upon him. God gets him out of one scrape after another until in prison he finds out Pharaoh is having these nightmares and he is given by God the ability to interpret them. Do you remember the story? He ends up saving Egypt. He saves the world by understanding there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And now we're into the famine and... Jacob's sons are desperate, and they come to Egypt, and they stand before their brother Joseph for help. And Joseph is the one who can save them. How about that for a twist? Now, what's the irony in that? Joseph can do anything he wants to these boys. 
he can with a with a simple with a simple word he can have them condemned he can have them killed he can do anything he wants and so he begins to play with them don't you love the story he takes and he, he kind of tests them and he finds out they have another brother and 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 he knows that this is Benjamin, his brother, the brother, the other son of, of Rachel, who died in childbirth, giving birth to, to Benjamin. This is this would make a great movie, wouldn't it? I think someone thought of that. He sends them home with grain and he puts the money back in their bags just to toy with them. Whenever they discover that the money they paid for the grain is in the bags, they about have a fit. They're frightened. And, and he keeps Simeon. He keeps one of the boys. I wonder if Simeon was the real bully among them. Don't, don't you think? He had to be the one that started that back years ago, right? Just had to be. Well, they go home, and they don't do a thing until all the grain is gone. And they're hungry again. And then they kind of reluctantly go to their dad. You know, I think we need to go back to Egypt, and this time we need to take Benjamin. He's not excited about that. Joseph, or Jacob, doesn't want to hear it. And finally, they're desperate enough. They send Benjamin, and, and they get there, and, and Joseph prepares a feast for them. And then he sends them off with the grain, and he puts the, the silver cup in Benjamin's bag. And after they're gone, a, little, a, few, a few hours, he... He puts, sends his servants to get them, and he tells them where to find the cup. It's just this, this, this horror story for them, because it's Benjamin's bag. And they come back to Egypt, and they stand before, or actually they kneel before Joseph. And he tells his secret. I am your brother, Joseph. Caring for, providing for, playing with, but loving these brothers that did such a terrible thing to him. I wonder how many of us, do we have ever have siblings? Any of us have siblings that have done nasty things to us? <laughs> Here's the lesson. But the lesson is more than that. It's Jesus tells the story the same way Joseph, you know, he, he played with them a bit. But the same way he forgave them and embraced them and loved them, we are called to behave in that same way to the people who wrong us, to the people that, that abuse us, to the people that, that do things to us that aren't nice. How do we do that? How do we do that? How are we doing at that? Again, these aren't my words. These are the words of Jesus. The one who, from the cross, spoke forgiveness to the very ones who had crucified him. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. No one could accuse Jesus of not following his own word, his own teachings. One of the things I found this week is from the, from the book, the Bible, the, the word <clears throat> from the message by Eugene Peterson. <clears throat> These words just, they come to life in the vernacular, in, the, in today's language. So I want to just share these, this story, this, this scripture, kind of slowly, and I, I want to, I hope that they can sink in for us. To you who are ready for the truth. That's a good question. Are we, are we, how are we on that one? Are we ready to hear this as, as the universal truth? To you, those of you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you. 
not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer for that person. I'm sorry. When I think that that, the way I read that in my other message, this is from online, I've got to say, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If anyone slaps you in your face, stand there and take it. If anyone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your coat and give, make that a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more payback. Live generously. Here's the simple rule of thumb for your behavior. Ask yourself, what would you want people to do for you? Then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run-of-the-mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest pawnbrokers does that. The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. But I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, you'll never regret it. Live out this God-created identity, the way our Father lives toward us, generously and graciously. Even when we're at our worst, our Father is kind. You, be kind. Don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures or criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people, and you'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life, and you'll find life given back. But not merely given back. Given back with bonus and blessings. Given, giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Can you picture, can you picture an enemy? <laughs> someone that, that you uh, maybe just aren't fond of, someone that's treated you poorly, someone that, you know, you just, I imagine for all of us, someone comes to mind. The wisdom of this, the wisdom of Jesus, the wisdom of, of, from the message as it's phrased there, is how do you want that person to behave towards you? What would happen if you behaved in that very way towards them? Oh God, make us ready for the truth. Help us to see ourselves a little more clearly through the words of Jesus. Help us to see, help us to notice examples, not only in the scriptures of Joseph and Jesus, but help us to notice examples in our own lives of people who are so gracious. They are able to love even the people who hurt them. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as your spirit comes and, and begins to initiate this and help us to do better at this, we pray that, that the movement would start, that enemies could become friends, that relationships could be reconciled, that friendships restored and families put back together. Yeah. We pray, O oh God, for your help in this in this kingdom, new creation work, where we let go of the values and the priorities of the world 
can take on a whole new being, a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of being. It's only your spirit that can do this change in us, O oh Lord. So help us to be ready to hear and receive the truth. For each of us individually, as a congregation, as a community, as a, as a nation, as a world, help us to be ready to hear the truth. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to invite you to turn with me in the bulletin to just the prayer, to the prayer of confession as kind of a way of response. And we'll take a few moments of silence, but then I'll invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together. Please join me. O oh God, we confess that these words are hard. It is hard for us to love our neighbors as ourselves, and even harder to love those we see as enemies. We cannot do this on our own. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Send your Spirit. Fill our hearts and minds with your unconditional love and grace in a measure that's overflowing, abounding, and running over, blessing everyone we meet. Amen. Our hymn uh, is number 226, You Are Salt for the Earth. I invite you to stand as we sing. blessed and a pilgrim people bound for 
with the kingdom of God. Love our journey and love our homeland. Love is the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of May the God of amazing grace give you eyes to see the beauty everywhere, hands to do good to everyone, and hearts to bless all those you meet. May we go in peace. Amen.